Hey guys, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and this year, once again, I am petitioning for a charity in the Project for Awesome. So if you missed last year's video, or have never really heard the term Project for Awesome, or P4A, as it is sometimes abbreviated, you may be living under a rock, but uh, in case you are, let's crawl, crawl out of the, that rock and... Uh, really kind of uh, learn about this for a second. So here on YouTube, uh, one of the more popular channels is a channel called The the Vlog Brothers. Uh, they've been making videos pretty much since YouTube started, maybe a little bit afterward, uh, and they're just like two brothers that go back and forth and they talk to each other, uh, and have their community has built up around them uh, over time. Uh, a couple years after they started making videos, they started a charity event that they do every December called The Project for Awesome. Uh, in their charity, the Foundation to Decrease World Suck, uh, which is a real charity uh, that, that uh, well, if you donate to it, is tax uh, deductible, which is really cool. Uh, and what happens every year for a Project for Awesome Time is you will see YouTubers, uh, in, in particular, making videos that promote their charity. Uh, so that's what I'm doing this year. Uh, uh, and, and over the course of the next, uh, be about a day and a half now, the project has actually been going on. For a little while, uh, I think the past day and a half, but I'm just now getting around to my, my video here, so... Uh, what you do, basically you go to the website, projectforawesome.com, you check out videos, uh, if you haven't already seen them uh, on YouTube from some of your favorite creators, uh, and you vote for the ones that are your favorite, and whoever gets uh, sort of the, like the top few uh, videos, will uh, those charities the people are voting for and, and uh, petitioning for, we'll get a, uh, a nice chunk of money. So uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we're doing. So for this year and for my video, uh, I want to talk a little bit about my, uh, my late grandmother, Joan. Um, she died uh, about five years ago. And it was a, uh, when, when she died, it was because of a long uh, and, and, and rough battle with ovarian cancer. Uh, and she was, I think with, with any grandmother, she was a, she was a special lady. And, uh, uh, it was it was rough. It was rough on all of us. Um, so, what's interesting uh, is that uh, a few years before she died, she started experiencing uh, pain in, in, her, in her lower abdomen, and nobody could really kind of figure out why. She would go to the doctors for tests, and they're like, "Hmm, well, I mean, yeah, we know you're experiencing pain, but we don't really know what it is." Um, it's actually kind of both funny and sad looking back that the one thing they said to her is, we don't know what this is, but it's not cancer. And then about two years after that, they said that, they're like, holy crap, it's cancer. You need to get in for surgery right now. Um, and at that point, uh, uh, the cancer had spread uh, from her ovaries to uh, a, a lot of her lower intestines. So they really kind of had to take a lot out um, of her. And it, it really kind of changed uh, her life, especially in the last couple of years, because it went, you know, she went from a, a you know, very, very healthy woman to uh, now, uh, at, at a lot of times, were, was bound to a wheelchair. She couldn't get around as much anymore. Uh, she got uh, a colostomy bag, so, so her, like, every trip to the bathroom was an ordeal. Um, but she kept a, a good spirit about her uh, for another uh, year and a half or so after that point. Um, actually, the uh, a piece behind me I did when uh, uh, this painting, uh, I painted this when she was in the ICU, uh, especially right after right after the cancer diagnosis, right after she kind of came in and uh, uh, and and it was because of the thing is uh, if you've experienced uh, whether. If you've been unfortunate to have a cancer diagnosis yourself, or you know somebody who has, and I think at this point uh, in, in history, I think most people have, have had that uh, experience. Is, is it is it messes with you, you know, and, and it changes your outlook on life a lot. Um, and so I was at, at that point in time, I didn't know how to handle it emotionally. So I did the one thing that I knew I could I could do, and that's paint. Uh, so I, at the time, living in the old house, the old studio, I came down, I grabbed a canvas, the first canvas I, I could really grab, and I just started moving paint around, uh, just to, to clear my head. Um, and th through doing so, 
uh, I kind of let myself heal that way. Um, but b back to uh, her story. Um, so it was you know, about a year and a half, maybe two years uh, after uh, the initial surgery that you know, she, she went through radiation, came back, she bounced back a bit, um, and then it and then it came back, and it came back really hard. Um, so uh, eventually, it was November of 2012 uh, that she did pass away. Um, and what really changed uh, for all of us is, is the knowing uh, about ovarian cancer and, and how much, uh, in, in relation to other forms of cancer, how much early detection uh, is important. So for that reason, uh, this year I am advocating uh, for my charity for Project for Awesome is the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition. Um, and uh, they're a charity that, while yes, puts money towards research and, and uh, they improve the quality of life for uh, both survivors and those families struggling uh, uh, with uh, that diagnosis, one of their biggest pushes is for awareness. Uh, and that's really important, uh, awareness and early detection. My grandmother did not have early detection, and her life was drastically changed, and eventually it ended because they just didn't get it. Uh, she Again, she was having pain for years prior to them finding it. Because they weren't looking in the right place, it just grew and grew and grew until, again, when they found it, it's it was like, holy crap. Um, so for the coalition, uh, I mean, they'll do big charity events. There's a, uh, here in Pittsburgh, there's a big uh, a walk every year. And um, it's really important to become aware of the situation, uh, especially when so many women uh, don't have that opportunity to, to get that early detection. If, and if they catch it early enough, it can absolutely be a survivable thing. Um, and my grandmother did survive for a while. But uh, because, again, she did not have that early detection, it, it changed. Uh, everything, and everything changed. Uh, so if you're looking for a good charity to support for Project for Awesome, uh, I urge you to support uh, NOCC. Uh, not just for cases like my grandmother, but for the ones that uh, they do catch early. Uh, and, and, and the ones that can really uh, save lives. Um, and I think that's really important. So thanks guys for listening. Um, if you want to support Project for Awesome, go to projectforawesome.com. Uh, you can donate money, you can vo vote for charities. Please vote for this one. Um, and this has been from Cinebloch Studios, and I will see you guys next time.